Last time, uh, when we were studying how to count the number of unordered samples without replacement from a given set, we discovered a number called a binomial coefficient denoted with this kind of strange n choose r notation. Remember, this is not a fraction. We don't draw a line between these two numbers. Uh, and the main idea is that n choose r counts the number of subsets of a given set that have a fixed size. So if our universe omega has n elements, then we're counting all the subsets a of omega whose size is equal to r. Uh, and so this is kind of the main perspective we're going to adopt here, talking about combinatorics, is that n choose r counts these subsets. Uh, so for example, we're going to enumerate all subsets of the set a, b, c, d, and we're going to categorize them by their cardinality. So in other words, I'm going to group the subsets by how many elements are in them. Uh, so if r equals 0, there's only one empty set, and that's the empty set. Uh, and so there's only one of these. Well, let's see what 4 choose 0 is equal to. It better be 1, right? So the formula for 4 choose 0 is 4 factorial divided by 0 factorial, that's r, 4 factorial, that's n minus r factorial. Uh, and we can cancel the 4 factorials. And 0 factorial is 1, so this is just 1. r choose 1. Well. This is all the subsets that have one element. So there's A, there's B, there's C, and there's D. All right, there's four of those. So four choose one had better be equal to four. Four factorial divided by one factorial, because one is R, and then N minus R is three factorial. Remember, we can write 4 factorial as 4 times 3 factorial. 1 factorial is just 1. We can cancel the 3 factorials, and sure enough, we've just got 4. All right, it's a little harder to write down all the two element subsets. I'm going to be systematic about it, so I'll do all my A's A, B, A, C. A, D. Actually, this is just the example we did in the last video, right? All the unordered samples of size 2. That needs to be a B. And then C, D. Alright, we knew, already knew there were six of those from that example last time. Uh, so we're going to have 4 choose 2 is 4 factorial over 2 factorial 2 factorial, which we already knew was 6. All right, next up we're going to have A, B, C, A, B, D, A, C, D, and B, C, D. Four choose three is four factorial over three factorial one factorial, which is equal to four. And so I want you to notice a couple of things. Notice that four choose three is just four choose one. And that's clear from the algebra, right? When we write this number down, uh, four choose one is four factorial over one factorial, three factorial. So the only difference is the order of the numbers on the bottom of the fraction. And of course that doesn't matter because I'm multiplying those numbers together. So algebraically it's clear that four choose three and four choose one are the same number. Another way we can think about the relationship between four choose three and four choose one is that when I'm counting three element subsets, I'm having to leave behind another element. So for example, the set ABC has its complementary subset as the set containing the element D. ABD has as its complement the element C. ACD leaves behind B, and BCD leaves behind A. 
So for each one of the three element subsets, there is exactly one one element subset that I'm leaving behind and vice versa. So there better be the same number of those. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little more detail in just a minute. Uh, and then there's only one, wouldn't be a video without that. There's only one four element subset. Having some trouble with this today. There we go. Of course, uh, when I take all the elements, I'm leaving behind nothing. So there's exactly as many four element subsets as there are empty subsets. So here's the theorem for that. Uh, n choose r is always equal to n choose n minus r. Uh, and here's a proof. It is basically exactly the uh, example that I just laid out, just kind of made general. Uh, we're gonna let x equal the set x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. And I'm gonna choose an R element subset of X and I'm gonna call it A. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rename the elements of X. I can do this whenever I want. It doesn't matter what the elements of a set are called. All that matters is how many of them there are. So instead of calling the elements of X whatever they were, I'm gonna rename them so the first R elements are in the subset that I choose. All right, well, if I choose X1 through XR, then that means I'm leaving behind XR plus one, XR plus two, dot, 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 XN. All right, so this is a R element subset. This is a N minus R element subset. And there's a perfect correspondence between these. For every A, there's a B, so there have to be exactly the same number of them, uh, and therefore N choose R is equal to N choose N minus R.